Section 5.4 is uh, dealing with more stuff with triangles. Um, we've been focusing on, so far, on dealing with triangles that have like different segments, lines, rays that intersect all at the same point. Mm -hmm. So concurrent lines or whatever. Um, we're still dealing with a segment involving triangles, but this time we're dealing with what we call a mid-segment. And you're going to notice some differences. Um, the main focus today is on this new idea of a theorem, uh, so another theorem. Uh, a mid-segment, let's define it first so we know what we're dealing with, and then we'll talk about this, what this theorem is saying. So a mid-segment says, it's a segment, of course, and this segment connects the midpoint, so kind of get an idea of why that's called a mid-segment, connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, All right? Okay. So, obviously a triangle has three sides. So if I just take two of the sides, so let's say segment AB, and I find the midpoint, so midpoint is kind of halfway through there, divides that segment into two congruent pieces. Um, let's call this M and find the midpoint of, let's say, side AC. Okay, so it divides the segment into two congruent parts. Maybe call that N. So a mid-segment is a segment connecting those two segments. So if I connect those two, or those midpoints, sorry, if I connect those two midpoints, that is a mid-segment right there. Okay, so mid-segment is connecting midpoints. Exactly. That makes sense. It's a segment connecting uh -huh. midpoints. So okay. segment MN, in this case, would be a mid-segment. All right. Now, the theorem that we're about to see kind of explores or what exactly is true about that. Now, a mid-segment or a triangle actually contains how many mid-segments, you think? Okay, well, let's see. You've drawn one in, but I'm looking at, I could say, between AC and BC, there's also going to be a mid-segment. And then also from BC to AB, there's yeah. going to be another mid-segment. If so I there's draw, three. Yeah, if I draw in another midpoint of this one, let's call this... Maybe P. Marks. Yep, thank you. <laughs> I do Make sure we time. label correctly. Yeah, that's right. All right, I'm kind of thinking and writing at the same time. That's not always a good thing. <laughs> if I connect these midpoints and I connect these midpoints, I can create two more mid-segments. Look at that. They make like a little triangle in yes. the middle. Yes, and there's actually more triangles, and you're going to see true. a picture there. But notice the, what makes this different than all the other types of uh segments or lines involving a triangle, they're not concurrent because they don't all intersect at the same oh, point. You're right. So that's why one reason why we have separated section 5.4 from the first three sections because really the only thing that this has in common, I'm going to go back and just do one mid-segment, the only thing that this has in common with the other sections is this is just involving a triangle and segments, but it's not dealing with concurrent. So there's nothing about they all meet at the same point. There's not another vocabulary term that we need to know, which is kind of reassuring. No more points of concurrency. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what we're going to explore is basically, or find out what's true about a mid-segment. So okay. that's what we're going to go to next. Sounds good. So this mid-segment theorem. It, a mid-segment, again, it's the segment connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. But the theorem tells me that if I've got this mid-segment, that there's some special relationships with this segment and kind of these other parts. It says that the segment containing the midpoints of the triangle, so we're talking about here the mid-segment. So in this picture, that would be segment DE. D -E. Exactly, DE. Um, is going to be parallel to the third side. Now, you see that it says third side. It's kind of confusing when we just look at it and say, okay, well then how do we know which one's the third side? How do I know which one are the first two sides? Well, they're talking about it's connecting the midpoints of two sides. So where it's connecting the midpoints of, those are the first two sides. Well, and that would make sense. The that third it, side it would wouldn't be, the one be well, and it wouldn't be parallel to the sides that it's touching. Exactly. Okay, so that's so going to be sense. parallel to that third side. And, one more thing, it's also half as long. Okay. So when I look at the length of AC, if I called the length of AC X, then the length of DE would be half of that. Half of X. Or if I said that the length of DE, and I'm going to draw another triangle with another mid-segment, so knowing that these are congruent and these are congruent, I know that those are connecting midpoints. If I called this um, triangle, I'm going to give you some different letters here, um, F, G, H, 
I and J. All right, so knowing that IJ is also a mid-segment, if I said I know its length is maybe X, then what would be true about GH? It would be twice that. It would be double, yeah, it would be 2X. So there's two really special relationships that happen. When we're okay. talking about a mid-segment, we need to know that it is parallel to that third side. So segment DE is parallel to segment AC. Which, when we're thinking parallels, I want you to realize then that also means we're going to have some special angle pairs here too. Yes. Because if we know that these are parallel, we have some corresponding angles that are going to then be congruent. Okay. Corresponding angles over here that are then going to be congruent. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And it's also half as long. Okay. Okay. Those are the two relationships we're going to be focusing on. Okay, so let's apply this, and the first thing again, guys, is that when you look at the picture, okay, and, and notice the directions don't say anything about the vocabulary of mid-segment. When you look at the picture, hopefully you're seeing some mid-segments. And what gives it away that we have some mid-segments in this picture? What well, do you think? Well, first of all, we've got these segments that are kind of going just between point, like inside points, but looking at them, I noticed that there's definitely the midpoints. Yeah. And so we can see the tick And what marks. gives that away is that, yeah, those tick marks. So in a sense, point D is a midpoint, point K is a midpoint, point J is a midpoint. So technically in this picture, I actually have two mid-segments drawn. Right. That segment DK, the one that connects those two midpoints, and then also JK. Now, if they're asking to find the length of JK, that is a mid-segment. So what you want to think about is we know if we're finding the length of a mid-segment, we're probably relating to the side that it's parallel to. Right. right. So we know that we're relating JK to which side? To AC. Okay, so if you think about it, what's the relationship between JK and AC? JK should be half the length of AC, AC, right? Because I know that it's, yeah. Half of it. Half of it's long. That, yeah, that long. particular third side. So noticing, and I just shot down what Ms. Hogarty said. So JK is half the length of AC. Well, what's kind of nice is they're giving you AC is 10. So we're just taking half of 10. So JK is 5. 5. Easy, easy, easy. So do, you could divide by 2 or you can multiply by half. It doesn't matter. Right. Okay? So that's one piece. Check that off the list. Now we're finding AB. Now looking at the picture... AB actually is what? That is a side of the triangle. Okay, so we, we're dealing with the side. Now, since we're dealing with mid-segments as well, we need to think about how does AB relate to the picture? Well, it's probably going to, we're going to relate it to which piece? Uh -huh. Well, I noticed that there's DK, that mid, other mid-segment that we mm -hmm. talked about, and it's got a length on it of 6. And I noticed that that is the one that's parallel to that third mm -hmm. side. So I know that DK is only half of the length of AB. So since I know DK is 6, if I took 6 times 2, that should get me to the length of AB. Yeah. So, it, so I like how you said this. You said DK was half of AB. You could also, and she's kind of, she threw it out and <laughs> said it. I'm going to make that comment here, is that AB is actually twice the amount of DK. Because there's going to be basically, I mean, it's twice the size there. So in other words, to find AB, you're just taking 6 times 2, and that gives you AB is 12. 12. Okay? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, so for this next one, notice our directions say to find the perimeter of triangle C and Y. All right, so we're going to be finding the perimeter, but... Does it look like we have any of those segment lengths yet to be able to talk about the perimeter? No, yeah, because perimeter means add up all the sides, and I look at those sides, and they don't give you the sides, but they are giving you the mid-segments, and from that last example, if I know the mid-segment, I can find the side. Exactly. So, okay, let's talk about this. If you know the mid-segment, let's talk about just one at a time. If I go with the nine, the segment AD. Yes. What do we know about segment AD? It relates to what? Um, it's going to relate to the side it's parallel to, which is side CY. So we know that AD is half of CY, or in other words, CY is twice AD. So I would just basically do two times nine, and I get CY to equal... 18. So really, if I just take twi double each of those mid-segments, then I would be finding the other side. So NY 
let's do like twice the AM, so two times the three, uh -huh. um, and that would get us six. Great. So there's one side, there's another side, and then I'm going to do for CN, I'm going to double the five, which is the mid-segment MD, so two times that five, that gets you ten. All right. Now, those now, aren't my answers, right? Those aren't my answers. Those are yeah. the side lengths, which is part of what we wanted to find, but they really asked us to find the what? The perimeter, which basically means you just add up. So 10 plus 6 plus 18. Um, what does that get you? 34? Sounds great. Okay. And they don't give me any labels. Well, 34 would be okay. Yeah. Now, now, one thing I want to point out about this one. Do you notice something special about, like, any of these little triangles in here? Look around the outsides. What do you notice? Mm. What do you mean? What am I noticing about? Which triangles are you talking about? About this triangle that I have right here. Sorry. I, I should be more specific because there are lots of triangles. <laughs> Let me can't help read you out there. Can't read your mind. Let me help you out there. What do you notice about that triangle out here, the outside triangle that you just found the perimeter of? Okay. And the, the mid-segment triangle, sorry. I oh. need to be way more specific. Ah. Way more specific. That, the one that's made up of the mid-segment. The one okay. that's made up of the mid-segment. <laughs> well, I'm noticing the one made, obviously, of the mid-segments is smaller, and it's actually all of those sides are half the sides of the larger one, right? Right. Um... So anyway, let's, we just talked about the perimeter. Okay. Let's talk about the perimeter of this smaller triangle, just to kind of look for some things. Okay, I like this what idea. What about the perimeter of the smaller triangle? And that's triangle. kind of what I was going, I was thinking. So the perimeter of the smaller one, well, if I add up those sides, that would be 3 plus 9 plus the 5, and that adds up to 17. So the bigger triangle we found was 34. The smaller triangle was 17. That smaller triangle's perimeter is half the size of the larger one. It is half the size of the larger one. Which is why that, would that be? Is that going to be the case? Cause, well, I'm thinking because each mid segment's our lengths are half of that third side. So if those mid segments are all half of those sums, then well, then the perimeters would be, be half, half of the perimeter. Exactly. Okay. So that's kind of do you think that's well. going to happen every single time? I think so because every single time you're just basically taking half, like this is half of this side, all right? It doesn't matter what the length is, this is going to always be half of that. So when you add up those sides, it's always going to be half of those perimeter. Right, exactly. And because you do always have that one half relationship, and when we're doing perimeters, we're just adding all the halves instead of exactly. adding all the holes. Yes. Okay, yeah. so knowing that, take a look at this ex next example. All right, so this next one says, the perimeter of triangle XYZ is 113. Okay, so they already give me the perimeter of the larger triangle. Okay, so this is the larger one. Okay. We're supposed to find the perimeter of triangle ABC. Oh, okay. Can well, we, can, can we just do half of it? Yeah, and I was going to ask, can we do it the same way as I did on the last one? Like, add up all the sides and sure, find it? Sure, except for we don't have any side lengths. Yeah, so we can't really do it that way. No. So the relationship really is what's going on between these two triangles. Now, are they mid-segments? Because that mm -hmm, only works if they're mm -hmm. mid-segments, right? Good question. Are these, do we have mid-segments that are making up the triangle ABC? Are these well, mid-segments? Yeah, because I'm looking. A is definitely the midpoint. It's marked that way. C is definitely the midpoint of those two sides, and B is definitely the midpoint of those two sides. So, yeah, those are all mid-segments. So then that perimeter should be just half. Of 113. Exactly. So if you know the perimeter of the larger triangle, and the triangle that you're dealing with is made up of mid-segments, then that perimeter is half of that. So a half of 113 is what? 56.5? Right. So the perimeter of triangle ABC, if I can write this, is 56.5. And this is just units. You don't have to label the Yeah, if it's just of, units, we won't be picky. Yeah. When they start giving you actual units to use. So like knowing that. what we explored on this last slide is helpful because this one you didn't even actually, weren't given any actual lengths. So you have to understand that relationship between the triangle that's made up of the mid-segment, so this triangle here, in relationship to the larger triangle. Right. Okay. okay. 
So this next one says to find x, y. Which, what do you notice x, y is? x, y is um, a side of triangle x, y, z, the largest triangle. Right. And they give us some information. They tell us that x, y is going to be m plus 1. And they even give us that bc, which what do you notice about bc? bc is a mid-segment. Mm -hmm. And the one that they're giving you, they don't necessarily give you the actual length of it, but they're giving you information about it. Um, it relates to x, y because those are the ones that are parallel. And we know bc is half of x, y. Right. Okay, in fact, let's just go right with what you said. Okay. You said that BC is, is half of XY. So, or you could write that even another way to say that. Yeah, you could say XY is twice BC. Oh, B. I don't know why I just wrote A. BC. Thank There's you. an A in there. Just not the right Not the one I want to use, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, when we want to go ahead and write our equation, we're just filling in, and instead of using the segments themselves to write, you know, their measures, I'm going to put in what they give us about their measures. Okay, so like BC is the M minus 3, so we right. could put M minus 3 equals. Do you want, which equation do you want to use? Well, let's set up both just to kind of make okay. a decision. sounds good. Because so either one will work, right? It will work. Okay, They're so exactly BC is M minus 3 equals 1 half. Now, xy is m plus 1. Now, do I have to have those parentheses? We do because it's half of the whole quantity. It's Good. not just half of the m or half of the 1. It's half of that whole piece. Okay, and then the other one I would say m plus 1 is equal to 2 times the quantity of n minus 3. So which one looks a little bit more well, I'm, Easy, more I'm, to work I'm with. thinking of, of our students, and <laughs> I'm thinking that the one on the right, because there's no fractions, because I know I a lot of you don't most. like to deal with fractions. <laughs> I would assume most of you guys Now, the one on the right would still work. Um, In fact, a lot of you would probably clear your fractions right mm -hmm. there, and it would look identical to this yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. But let's deal with the one on the right. So okay. I would distribute through, so I get m plus 1 equals 2m minus 6. I end up with m equals 7. And then is that what they asked us to find? Nope, was just M. Nope. So we're, we're not, not gonna, done. We're not going to circle that one. We're going to put it back in for to find X Y. So it's going to be basically seven plus the one, which ends up being eight. So I'm technically done. But could I check my work since this is an algebraic problem? I, you know, that sounds like a great idea to me. So that's saying that this side right here would be what then? That whole side is eight. And what was this one? And if I put seven in there, seven minus three is four. And that is half of eight, so it checks out. Perfect. 